intro, and then we'll... Hey, folks, thanks for tuning in to the BAMF Podcast. I'm your host, Mike Lafferty, and here's our cheesy intro. Thank you for tuning in, folks. That uh, clever musical intro assures you you're listening to a high-quality, professional podcast with only the highest production values. Organically harvested, uh, ethically sourced, geeky bullshit right here, folks. Um, Tonight... Pardon my language. We do have an explicit, explicit tag, so, you know, you were warned. Ross Watson, a renowned game designer, is here to talk about the Secret World RPG. Hey, Ross. Did I lose you, Ross? Did I lose you? <laughs> Jim, are you here? Test, test. I, I can still test. hear you. Okay. Test. Yeah, sorry. Right, now you're back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that was lovely. That was weird. Okay. Uh, yeah, welcome. Thank you for having me on the show, Mike. I really appreciate it. We're really excited because we have the Secret World RPG on Kickstarter right now. It launched uh, just a couple of days ago, and we are moving right along. We're almost about to 80,000 today, which is really uh, exciting. That is awesome. Um, hey, uh, my co-host for the first time ever in the podcast on the podcast, Jim Bogman. Yay! Who is our, uh, yay! Jim is a mountain of a man, um, twice as tall as a normal man with a shock of red hair and a sinister gleam in his eye. Actually, not too much hair, hair anymore. I look a lot more like Ross these days. <laughs> no, that, that, that is accurate. I was just lying. Um, but yeah, Jim is our subject matter expert, um, at least as far as hosts go, because I've never actually played the Secret World MMO. But um, help me out here, Ross and Jim. Uh, this is an RPG set in modern times, um, and you play one of three factions, correct? And it's set in the world of uh, skullduggery and conspiracies, right? Well, what it, basically, what if all the myths were real? Uh, that's that's what's going on in the secret world. Yeah, you do play a character who is one of these three factions, um, but the, the the factions are all kind of working together to assist Gaia against these cosmic horrors. Uh, that's sort of the the core element of it. Now, Jim can can weigh in here and uh, probably add a lot more context to that. Yeah, it's got, it's kind of got a, a Lovecraftian supernatural feel because you've got all sorts of monsters that are coming out and you've got all sorts of secret organizations that are working against them or in some cases even working for them. You run into cultists and things like that. And you're playing one of the members of the, the three factions, the Illuminati, the Dragon, and the Templars. Who are working against the supernatural and you're kind of working with other people but you also got the different uh uh potential friction between the factions which can make for some some interesting interplay in the computer game it of course had the pvp elements but in the tabletop role-playing game it can give you opportunities for interesting role-playing from the different perspectives of the different factions Cool. Yeah, our, our focus in the RPG is really um, a little more, I guess you would call it PVE content, because we're we're kind of aiming the idea that there is a, a mysterious figure um, who has brought together, yeah, yeah we are going to need more stretch goals. Thank you, Ethan. <laughs> uh, this mysterious figure has brought together these these heroes from different factions to go on you know particular missions and things like that. So there, you, there's really, it's, it's not meant to be like a PVP type uh, setting. It's... It's meant to be where you're all working together to help Gaia by fighting the, the monsters. Yeah, I wasn't really anticipating that the players would actually fight each other, but in a in a role playing setting, it's always good for there to be some differences in perspective. Yeah. Not necessarily so that the the, the players fight each other, but at least you've got role playing from different perspectives. You've got the order of the Illuminati versus the chaos of the dragon. <laughs> they are very chaotic. Like yeah. I was just like, wow, those guys are they, they take that whole uh, entry thing real serious. Yeah. So we're looking at some art um, of the game right now. Can you uh, tell our viewers at home, uh, what are the th these three figures we got here, uh, what factions they belong to? Uh, so the guy on the left with the katana, uh, he belongs to the Dragon, uh, which is the organization that Jim was just talking about that is, uh, they have embraced chaos. Uh, they ride it, like, you know, kind of, kind of like uh, Ian Malcolm from uh, Jurassic Park. Okay. Uh, then you've got the lady in the middle with two pistols. She is a Templar, and they are uh, more into order. <laughs> Jim, you could probably help me out here with the Templars. Yeah, the, the Templars are kind of like the militaristic group. They're, they think that the best way to approach the supernatural is to shoot them in the head. Hence, you know, the, the guns there, and they're much more, you know, we're going to meet them head on and, and defeat force with force. 
which generally speaking, they're not wrong either, which is pretty great. And the uh, the figure on the right with the submachine gun there, uh, that is the Illuminati. And the oh, Illuminati, cool. they certainly want to still fight the supernatural, but they're much more like they're going to sneak up and, and you know shoot them in the head uh, with a sniper rifle type of thing rather than just go in you know, against them via, you know, front, uh, frontal assault. Right. I, I want you guys to know that I'm expending willpower to not make some joke about Tupac being a member of the Illuminati. And I, I want you to appreciate how hard that is for me. Because <laughs> I'm a classy host and I wouldn't make a cheesy joke like you, that. You know, one of the things that is uh, uh, interesting about the, the secret world is that all of the conspiracies are true. So Tupac might actually be an Illuminati member. Oh, so Ethan sure. McEwen has a question. He says, are there any plans to offer more slots for the $500 tier? By the time I received the email that the chaos is open, uh, Kickstarter was open, I missed my chance. Uh, Ethan, we are, we're considering it. Um, the problem is that we have, uh, we, we have artists that we have to make sure are okay. Like they have enough bandwidth to create these, uh, these awesome characters for you guys. So we have to double check and make sure that we can add more slots. Uh, and, and we are close to capacity because we did two of them. Um, I, I won't say, I won't say no, but I'll say we're, we're definitely thinking about it. Sweet. Okay. Um, oh, wow. I got another question from someone interested in the uh, Kickstarter. Uh, oh, one sec. Um, here we go from Zerg, Zerg Titan 99. Um, if the new classes and subclasses are based on the jobs and job decks in the game, then what do the factions provide to the player options that is not equipment or role play? So the factions, you know, I mean, I, I don't want to draw too close a parallel between this and 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 D and D because it is it's fifth edition, but it's you know we're we're making some changes. There's no you know races like you're you're human. Oh, thank you, Ethan. Uh, so the question is, uh, you know, what what do the factions provide? Well, the factions have their own individual. Uh, they, they have their own agendas and actually furthering your faction's agenda is something that that helps you that gets you it's, it's one of the ways you get inspiration in the game uh so your faction's agenda is going to be something you're going to have in the back of your mind a little bit i don't know if you've ever played um paranoia but in paranoia the secret societies and you know the secret society would always hand you a little note like you know you're, you're on a main mission but i need you to do this little thing for me and they will do that as well uh i would say their their primary role is uh you know, story based and and you know inter interfacing with their agenda but there's also certain uh, gear and feats and things like that that are gated off by faction so you there, there's certain things you can only get if you're a member of the dragon or a member of the illuminati so hopefully that helps um hey so who is this guy here uh that guy is uh, I love his uh, his slippers. Um, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I've seen this piece of art before. Um, okay, no worries. I think I think this guy is a a. a uh... No, I don't know. It's a good question. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I don't recognize him immediately from the game. Uh, but it, I mean, it looks like he's just somebody that's out there beating up zombies with his baseball bat. Yeah, very likely. He's probably you know one of the survivors who's going to be a player character uh, and join. One of the probably the dragon with those slippers. <laughs> probably the dragon with those slippers. All right, fair enough. Um, well, cool, cool. I'll, I'll, I'll keep cycling uh, through the pictures here. Uh, anybody uh, out in the audience, any questions? Uh, please feel free to jump in. And uh, Ross alluded to it before, but just to say it, you know, out there, so it's clear this is based on the fifth edition rules of the world's most popular role playing game. That's right. Uh, we are doing uh, a Kickstarter right now, and if you want to uh, get a copy of the Secret World RPG, that's your best way to do it. Um, we are doing uh, print on demand through Drive Through RPG, so uh, you can get the PDFs, or you can get. Uh, we will get you. We will. We have a, a level that's for print that we will give you a code where you can print at cost through Drive Through. So it's much cheaper than waiting to get it on Drive Through that way. Yeah, and uh, I guess congratulations. Oh, look at that order. number. Look at that number. Look at that number. Up. You guys are uh, closing out 80,000. Yeah, we're, we're doing super well. Brandon and I are, are just uh, amazed at all the love and appreciation that fans of the Secret World have shown. And the backers are the ones that make this thing possible. So we're very, very grateful to everybody who's uh, shown up and, uh, and, and helped us make this project come true. 
So, Ross, I noticed looking at the Kickstarter that it sounded like you guys were going to be having some of the settings from the, the computer game and even maybe some of the missions involved in this. Can you talk more about what people are going to recognize when they get the role playing game versus what they've played in the computer? Uh, I, I think, you know, we're aiming for a not exactly a one to one. Like, you know, you, you can't really take the MMO and, and, and put it into a, a role playing game. Um, so we're we're aiming for things that immerse you in the setting and give you that really uh, intimate experience that you get from role playing or sitting around the table with your friends and putting yourself into the mind of that character. Uh -huh. uh, so what that means is I, we are uh, we are looking at things from a slightly different perspective. We're looking at it. We're kind of zooming in, if you will, where the, the MMO is kind of like out here. We're going to zoom in a little bit more. Uh, there are things you're going to recognize. Absolutely. There's going to be uh, the, the characters and there's going to be the. Uh, the factions and the, the and Gaia and, all, and, and the bees and the buzzing. <laughs> just, I mean, all, all that stuff is in the game. Um, but we are, I, I would say we have a, a different approach um, to it. Is there anything specific that you're going to recognize? I can't think of anything off the top of my head at the moment, but I'm sure that there, there is because we got uh, Joshua uh, uh, Deutsch is, uh, I don't know how to pronounce his last name. I'm sorry. Uh, but Joshua is uh, one of the writers for the secret world and he is the guy i'm leaning on is the project manager i'm like hey josh you know put as much as you can into this game that you know comes from what he did uh so i should really ask josh and, and find out like what cool easter eggs and and things that he's he's slipped in there but i know we've got a number of named characters from the game are going to show up for sure and a number of named locations are going to show up and is the is the initial book that you guys are putting together is it actually going to have much in the way of like missions or is it going to be more of like here's the big setting and the rules but then you know anything past that is is up to the GM who's running the tabletop. So we've got uh, the the main book is is the rules and the character creation and the gear the monsters uh, everything you need to run the game. Um, it includes a section on game mastering which is going to have a lot of ideas like adventure seeds. Right. Or for what kind of adventures you want to run. Um, we have a stretch goal for, I think, 90,000, where we will unlock an eight page intro adventure that we're writing. So we are going, we are planning on having an adventure uh, for everybody uh, that you can just sit down and play, but that has not been unlocked yet. Um, and we may have, de depending on how things go, we may have further stretch goals that add more missions. Because I know one of the things I really enjoyed in the original game when it was first coming out was prior to the launch when they had the ARGs, the alternate reality game set up and all the puzzles and everything. That, and that would be something that you could really easily factor into like a module or something, having puzzles and that that the players won't necessarily know automatically, um, but could be an interesting way to have interesting stuff in the game. You know, I will take that note. And I will make sure that our writers know about it when they're working on uh, working on further adventures. So yeah, thanks. Good idea. Good idea, Jim. We'll do that. I like the idea of puzzles and 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 enigmas and things. I mean, the, my the mystery is actually one of the core elements of the game. Yeah, and it was so great in the in the computer game when they would give you clues and things, especially in the original game where you would you would get a clue and you could actually go out to the real world internet and be looking up stuff because they had stuff from the real world built into the game and you'd find something in the game and you'd go look that up in Wikipedia and find some you know some reference in the real world that also then ties back into the game. That would be cool. We could have a puzzle where it's like, okay, you you know, this is like an open book test. If you want to get your, your phone out and, and Google this, you can. <laughs> yeah. That'd be fine. That is kind of like cool. That. Hey, I have got several questions stacking up in the comment section. Okay. Um, let me put them up here real fast. Uh, first, a question about 5e, why it was chosen uh, from Ethan McCoyne. Why'd you pick 5e? My own DM actually chose it as they set up some of the uh, Secret World Monsters known DD campaign. I'm curious as if your reasons were similar so um my partner brandon verhalen is the the ceo of uh, star Anvil studios and he originally made the deal with with funcom for this before i, I kind of came on board so this was something that was kind of decided before i showed up but it makes a lot of sense 5e is not only the world's most popular role-playing game it's actually quite flexible um and there's actually uh quite a few groups that are doing more modern stuff with it now um so we I, I I didn't pick it. I came on board when it was already picked. Uh, but I think it's I think it's a good a good rule set uh, certainly, and it's a great way to get uh, 
crossover from people who play D&D who like the secret world, they can they can jump right in. All right, cool, cool. And we have another question. Hang on, uh, from Zerger1099. This is about print on demand versus a uh, offset print run. Uh, Zerg uh, Titan 99 says, will there be a, direct stre- a stretch goal where the physical print copies are sent directly to us instead of print at costs, or is there a logis- logistical reason not to? Yeah, see, uh, I, on the on the main page for the Kickstarter, it, it says anything that's that's not digital is print on demand through drive through And we chose to do that uh, specifically because there's a lot of challenges with shipping, printing and shipping, especially these days. Uh, the U.S. Postal Service, uh, you got slowdowns overseas, you got war. Yeah, you got a lot of reasons why a book might not get to you. Um, and uh, putting it through drive through they already have all that stuff in place. They already have all the, the infrastructure. So it's just, uh, frankly, it's kind of the only way a small group like like uh, Star Anvil can get something like this going. Uh, we, we don't have a warehouse. Uh, you know, we don't have a place to put a bunch of books. And, you know, I, I'm not going to break my back like carrying them down to the, the post office. So honestly, it's the best result for backers. Is, is to do it through uh, drive through because they have a, a, a tried and tested proven system to get this to you. And another question from Zerg Titan. Um, was it a challenge to get the IP for this? I know that game companies can be quite restrained allowing other parties to play with their materials. You know, honestly, I wish I could answer this question. Um, but unfortunately, this is, again, this is the thing that, that Brandon did before I came, I kind of showed up. Uh, according to him, uh, you know, he he did the deal um, and they were, they were interested. But I think, you know, Having worked on a lot of IPs, I've worked on, you know, Warhammer 40K, Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, I've worked on a lot of IPs. Um, usually the IP holders um, see RPG games, you know, tabletop RPGs, um, as kind of a double-edged sword. On the one hand, uh, you get a lot of detail that maybe your original IP maybe not wouldn't have. Um, like a lot of 40K stuff didn't have a, a man-on-the-street perspective on things until the role-playing game came along. And... The uh, the secret world is no different. We're we're showing a different perspective with a lot more detail and things like that. So that's the one side. The other side, though, is that tabletop role playing games just aren't that <laughs> typically aren't that uh, profitable for the big companies. So they they tend to look at it as like, well, this generates a lot more content and you know coolness, but at the same time, it's not going to make us a lot of money. Um, I imagine it was probably there was some there was some conversations at Funcom where they were like, are we sure we want to do this? Um, but you know, thankfully they did, and I'm I'm really excited because they're behind us 100 on this. My understanding is that most uh, IPs for RPGs are negotiated in a Writers of Last Ark esque drinking contest at a convention, but I could be wrong about that. <laughs> Man, that would be so much more fun. <laughs> God so uh, who is this guy we're looking at here who reminds me of Robin Williams from the Fisher King? Doesn't he? Like, I, I pretty yeah. much that's what I see. Like, okay, remember the idea is like the, all the conspiracy theories are true. So this is probably mm-hmm. a guy on the corner who's got like a crazy uh, out there idea of what's really happening. And, you know, he could he could be a great uh, NPC to, to talk to, maybe even a quest giver. This would be a fun guy to, to show up and say, you know, the, the lizard people, they're under DIA. The Denver International Airport. We need you to, <laughs> we need you to do something about them. And 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 in this world, that would actually be true. That is an actual conspiracy theory. Um, hey, uh, speaking of missions, uh, I got a question from Ethan. How have you been? How have you, or have you been able to incorporate any of the different types of missions from SW action, sabotage, investigation types? I mean, uh, this is a, you know a question Jim was talking about earlier, and Jim has some really great ideas. Honestly, Jim, if you want to you know like write for us, you should probably send me an email later. <laughs> um, but the, uh, the, 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 the three different types of things were, they don't, they don't translate exactly to, uh, to tabletop, but, uh, there will be elements like those certainly in the, in the, uh, the adventures. It, it, say, right now we don't have any adventures at the moment, but I'm, I'm almost certain we're going to unlock that 90,001 and, and get, get that intro adventure. So I'm, I'm going to say that when we get to that, we will definitely have those elements in it. Okay, cool, cool. Um, all right, last uh, last current question from Zerg Titan 99. Please feel free to ask more questions. When it comes to the special faction covers and drive through RPG, how will they process? How will the process of the cover choices work and ordering them? Okay, so the the way it works is we're going to give you a code. Okay, and that code you'll take the drive through RPG. You'll have the PDF, and then you're like, I'm going to select print on demand. 
and then it's going to you're going to put in the code you're going to get the you're going to get the product at cost you're going to print at cost which is cheaper um there will be a specific pdf for the special faction cover books because the pdf will have the special faction cover and that you will you will go through the same process that you did for any other print on demand product you'll just you'll put in the code and you'll it'll tell you how much it's going to cost to print how much it's going to cost to ship and then you're, you're good to go all right, cool. Hey, uh, Jim, this might be a question for you. Um, just found this in the art folder. What am I looking at here? Uh, to be perfectly honest, I don't remember. Like I said, when I was playing the computer game, I, I got I was heavily involved in in as it was spinning up, doing the ARGs and that going into it. But once it started playing the game, I didn't get that far into it. Um, it looks like it's something along the Japanese side, given the the mask up on the top. But beyond mm -hmm. that, I couldn't really tell you exactly where it factored in. I'm mean, obviously they're trying to sell bathrobes or something on the right. <laughs> but uh, this is a uh, concept art, I believe. Yeah, yeah. He's also got some nice headphones. So okay, yeah. uh, I was just wondering. So Be Beats by Cthulhu. Beats by Cthulhu. <laughs> Uh, music to lose your sanity by. So, all right. <laughs> so, Ross, I know in the original game they they had a, a very classless system where everything was based on the equipment you had, and then in the in the Secret Wars Legends they went more with a class type system. I know with the Five E you've got classes generally built into the game. So, is this more like a Secret World Legends version of the game? Well, Se Secret World Legends is the the current version of Secret World that Funcom is, is doing. So we, we want to work right. closely with them on that. Okay. Um, and we have a number of classes. We have nine classes in the game. And I believe those match up very closely to the Secret World Legends uh, classes. We're doing something a little different with the subclasses. The subclasses are going to be something you can switch between. And we're going to have these cool things called power cards that you can basically, every time your character takes a short or long rest, you can pull out a different card and be like, oh, you know what, I'm going to use my, my blood abilities now. I'm going to use my... Uh, I, I, we, the, I don't remember all the names, but there's, there's one that's, you know, melee focused and there's one that's like, it's a particular type of gun and there's one that's a particular type of magic. Um, and so you'll, you'll switch between those things kind of like that. So you'll have your, your core class, but anybody can have any one of the, the, uh, the subclasses. You start out knowing two and then you get, every time your proficiency bonus goes up, you get another option that you can then add to your little your little deck or whatever, however you want to keep track of your, your subclasses. Uh, I had another question, um, again, from Ethan. Uh, you mentioned some of the IPs you worked on. How is it to jump into one that is so different from the rest you mentioned? Uh, well, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's a trip. Uh, Brandon's a great guy. I'm really excited to be partnered up with him on this. And uh, the Secret World is a really neat setting. One of my best friends, uh, Charlie Spicer, uh, he used to DM for me like 30 years ago when I was in college. Uh, Charlie is the biggest Secret World, Secret World nerd on the planet. And he is like the guy who I will always go to to find out more about this setting. Because uh, he's done all the, you know, like Jim, he's played the game. He's he's, he's worked on, you know, uh, audio dramas for it. Uh, so Charlie's is, is the guy, but he, the, you know, the, I sit there fascinated when Charlie talks about the secret world and, and there's a lot of really neat concepts and ideas here that, that resonate with me. Um, I, I love working on different IPs is, and, and sometimes it's, it's fun just to learn a new one. And this is for me, secret world is, is that a new one that I'm just, just now getting into. And, and it's really interesting. I really love the fact the way the, the game was able to tie in all the legends that we're familiar with, you know, everything that we've heard of, whether it be Cthulhu or Viking myths or anything else, you know, you hear that stuff and then you see it in the game and you see how they've tied them together. So I think that could be a really interesting part of the role playing game of being able to actually play with the types of legends and conspiracies that you see in the real world. Chupacabras. Right. Bigfoot. Mothman. <laughs> I've always I've always enjoyed when you've got a tabletop game and you can actually bring in things from the real world, whether it be, you know, news reports or anything else, and and you can use that as part of your your setting and your background. You're 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 going into a mission. You can actually show a real world news article about this and say you're going to go research that now. Jim, you're 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 hitting on all cylinders right now because I'm going to make sure that goes into the GM section. <laughs> where you know use use news reports from the real world they're super cool and super fun and you can find ways to i'm sure there's a generator out there somewhere for uh like newsprint 
Oh yeah, or, or you know, creepy pastas, Slender Man, that kind oh, of stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. For well, sure. and and especially with with subject matter like this, you can actually use the real world stuff. I remember one of the um, one of the role playing games we played. It was an XCOM based tabletop Ooh. game, and I actually went out to MUFON and I downloaded real world UFO reports, and I handed those to the players and I said, "Here's a bunch of UFO reports. You know, what do you want to investigate?" That's awesome, dude. I love XCOM. Uh, big, big, big XCOM fan. Vigilo Confido, Jim. <laughs> From Ethan, uh, when designing monsters for your RPG, did you have to stick close to what is already in the game, or did you have any opportunity to create anything completely new? We we do have the opportunity to create some new stuff, um, and we're going to, I mean, I keep saying if, but I, it's almost guaranteed. We're, we're going to get this 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 adventure unlocked, and we're going to have some some new stuff in there for you to to encounter. Um, but that being said, the secret world is, it's a touchstone, right? It's, it's really important to people. And I think we're going to spend the majority of our time on creating monsters that you will recognize the guys that are the iconic bad guys from the game. That's what we'd really like to present to you. Uh, so yeah, we can make new, but I, I, I think it's better for us to, to make sure you find the, the good stuff from the, the secret world, uh, or secret world legends. And punishment 90 says also analog horror stuff like the back rooms and the Mandela archive um help me out here i i'm I, what is the back rooms the back rooms uh jim what's the back rooms yeah unfortunately like i said i, I didn't play that much on the computer game when it actually came out so this, i don't remember those references either that might not be from the game that might be something like uh the uh that might be something like the creepypasta guys came up with that i don't know i'm sorry sorry punishment i don't know well, and another thing I was going to mention was it's really great too coming out now because you know they're, the the game itself has been out for a while, but there's been a lot of development since then. So with the tabletop game coming out, you can take any you know newer, more more contemporary stuff, whether it be from horror movies or whatever, you know lately, and you can throw that in as well. That 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 is kind of cool. Um, we are living in kind of a uh, a golden age of horror movies. Uh, oh my gosh yeah yeah i've I, I watch a lot of horror movies love them you see anything good lately uh well i told you about barbarian i thought barbarian was really good okay the back um, rooms it's a game i i think so but actually let me know if this is what you mean it's um you're wandering around an endless uh maze and you hear creepy noises around you and i'm guessing it's like the slender man game where horrible things can happen if you go the wrong oh, way but i don't know so that's neat kind of uh Kind of the shining here a little bit. I, I, I worked in this office. Oh, wow. Yeah, I can see what they're going for. That's kind of cool. Um, oh, here we go. Uh, from Punishment. Backrooms in Urban Legend and Creepypasta describing endless maze of random generated office rooms and other environments people find themselves in. Oh, okay, cool. So that's what that that's game awesome. is looking for. Yeah. Hey, thanks for telling me about that, Punishment. I, I did not, I was not aware of that one. So is the Mandela Archive the same thing as the Mandela uh, Effect, where you think I, you remember things that don't really exist? I bet it's very related. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bet. I haven't seen it myself, but I'm bet it's probably full of those kinds of. Uh, are we living in an alternate reality? Didn't Berenst, Berenstein used to be pronounced Berenstein? That kind of thing. <laughs> you know that one got me. That one got me pretty hard because I did remember it. But according to what I read somewhere, is like there was a an ad on television that was. That the, the 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 lady who was you know presenting the product had a uh, mis mispronounced it and that's why it's stuck in our heads. I don't know. That's I don't know if that's true. You're you're muted, Mike. Ah, uh, sorry. Um, I found yeah. the Mandela catalog. Um, I know we're way off subject here. Forgive me. Uh, <laughs> ADD fixation. The Mandela catalog is a analog horror series created by Alex Kister in 2021. It's comprised of six episodes. <laughs> Each a series of VHS tapes. The story is set in an alternate universe of Mandela County. The residents are being played by a group of hostile, seemingly supernatural organisms known as the Alternates, which utilize psychological warfare to force a victim to utilize suicide to escape their torment just to take their place shortly afterwards. See, this is uh, this is kind of secret world adjacent, so I'm not really worried about it being off topic. You know, we're we're adjacent. <laughs> right next door. Sweet. Um, all right, so tinyurl.com slash secret world rpg is the nifty tiny url i made up because i'm a conscientious and professional podcast host um check it out uh they have just started and they're closing on eighty thousand. 
Oh, and here's punishment. The Montana catalog is an analog horror series. The story is an alternate universe. <laughs> the Kennedy the residents are being plagued by it. Yes, yes. I have, I have heard of it just now. So, all right, cool. <laughs> you guys are closing on at $80,000 with a quickness, and we've been up for 48 hours. So it uh, looks like there's going to be all kinds of stretch goals in your future. You know, I, I, I have a good feeling about it. Um, we're on the front page of Kick Track, and, uh, you know, we're just we're just doing really well. Um, it's 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 humbling to be to see how much passion people have for for this this uh property yeah um well you know I, that's all great but you've been the band podcast now sir i mean things are just going to take off <laughs> that's right first first band podcast tomorrow the world i want to yeah. extend a special thanks to jim actually uh it was great to have you here because uh, your knowledge of the lore is, is probably a little bit better than mine. Uh, you know, I, I do a lot of project management on this thing, and I know I, I see it, but I also it, it kind of goes in one one ear and out the other because I'm 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 doing uh, revisions and I'm doing uh, assignments and I'm doing editing and stuff like that. So uh, I'm really glad you were here, and you had some really great ideas, dude. I'm I'm grateful. Happy to help. So, Whoa! Yeah, uh, look at that, dude. Yeah, just to end with the Halloween image, uh, that is jack o <laughs> Nice. That's a great Halloween one. Yeah, that really is. Actually, Jim and I were playing someone looked similar to this in uh, City of Heroes last night. So, Ooh. Well, and another, another great thing about this kind of a game in a tabletop setting is you can go out to the Internet and you can get, you know, real world pictures and everything else of the stuff. And so when you go to encounter something, you can pull up something and show your players, hey, you know, here's a picture of the Slender Man. Here's a picture of the, the, the pumpkin head that you're fighting or something like that. And because there's, it's not something that's made up, it's not, you know, just a gaming thing, you can actually uh, show, you know, really really nice artwork and and materials for it yeah it's a, that, that there's a lot of options I, I really think we should work in the blucifer somehow but that's, <laughs> he should definitely be in there yeah for those of you who don't live in denver um this is the statue that you see on the way to the denver international airport blucifer and i don't know if you know the whole story but it actually killed its artist and it will kill again yeah yeah, the, uh, the guy in the Mexico. Anatomically correct as well. <laughs> and it's got no red glowing eyes that come out. And got, and not making it up. So it's, it's, and, and, you got the, and you got the tunnels under DIA. So perfect conspiracy, you know, location there for everyone oh. to uh, to be to be exploring. So I'm I'm signed up to run uh, a game like the game with the creators. It's part of the Kickstarter thing. So I, I am uh, probably going to use that. <laughs> Watch out for Lucifer. Ooh, Sweet. massive version in Halloween event. Okay, cool. Thanks, uh, Ethan. You've been great. You, you had some great questions, great comments. I really appreciate it, buddy. Yeah, he's he's he seems to know a lot more about the computer game than I do. I'm definitely not the expert in this discussion. <laughs> uh, none of us are the the experts, I think, but uh, we we do our best. Well, I, um, we've been talking for about half an hour, and usually aim for thirty minutes because it keeps it fun, fast, and friendly. Um, any closing thoughts before we wrap things up? Uh, so for me, I would just say uh, The Secret World is going to run uh, for another 27 days. But if you want to jump in early now and, and, and lock in a particular level, and like um, one of those guys was asking for more limited levels, we are going to probably release more of those later on. So keep an eye on the updates and, uh, you know, don't be afraid to let us know what you think because uh, we are we're looking at all the, the comments. Sweet. Uh, Jim, any closing comments from you? Just uh, looking forward to see what kind of stretch goals you guys actually get unlocked and, and maybe add in there. I'm uh, really excited for this material to be out there. It's been, a, like I said, a, the setting is what I really loved about it. The computer game was something that I was I played for a while, but it was really the setting I fell in love with. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what we can do in a tabletop setting with it. Cool, cool. Well, hey, thanks, everybody, for tuning in. I appreciate all the comments. And um, I'm going to play the stupid uh, musical intro just as a musical outro. And uh, thanks again for tuning into the BAMP podcast, and we will catch.